what are some of the basic things you're expecting to see in due diligence? Yeah, I, I, I usually like to break it down to four things. It's, it's financials, um, it's marketing, it's operations, and it's growth, really. So uh, financials is the biggest thing. You are usually valuing at a multiple of that net profit or seller's discretionary earnings. So I want to make sure that the financials are, are what they are when I submitted the LOI, the letter of intent. So I'll ask for tax returns. I will ask for access to Amazon or Shopify, um, bank statements for the last 12 months, credit card statements, authorized.net. Uh, and what I do is I take all this information and I uh, play a detective. I uh, uh, redo the financials and rebuild it. It takes a lot of time, but this is how you can verify to make sure that the, the financials are, are correct. I don't think sellers do it intentionally, but sometimes things do get missed. Uh, and, and that's where you're able to find kind of, okay, well, you know, you didn't include this expense, but I will incur it. I think the valuation should be this. Um, so the, as far as financials go, I, I, act, I ask for all of those. As far as access goes, um, yes, I would like access to the backend system mainly. That's the main thing. Um, Facebook, you know, uh, I'd like access to your Facebook campaigns um, are another thing as well. Uh, Google Analytics, Google Ads. Uh, are definitely a few things I would ask for access to as well. So you're going to want to look in Seller Central if they're on Amazon. You want to get into Shopify if they're on that or whatever their shopping cart or CRM is. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you're looking for the reporting and analytics of the sales, matching those then, you know, with the financials to see it. Oftentimes I see this a lot. People, you know, uh, how people handle refunds sometimes isn't, uh, isn't done properly. So they, they're taking a net number instead of a gross number. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it'll still wash out in the end, but you know, having that detail is important because you need to understand the, uh, the refund rate. Um, yep. You mentioned refund. Uh, I remember this one deal, they pre-sold a lot of uh, gift cards. And so, you know, the seller got all the revenue and when I didn't realize this, but when, you know, time came, when I took over a lot of customers, you were using gift cards. I wasn't getting revenue for any of that. And that was never part of the contracts either. So, <laughs> these are things unplanned for, but you know, these are things now I'll watch out for. Yeah. Good point. Cause you, you've, you're just having to fulfill and you know, those orders and not get any money for it. So that's yep. right out of your pocket. Yep. Uh, so you also mentioned authorized.net, um, you know, for an aspiring buyer who's not familiar with payment systems, that's a payment gateway. Um, NMI authorized.net, very, very, very common one. So it's important to uh, log into those and, and that that's, you know, a, an auditable system. It's a system of record for the payments as well. Uh, a really good system to take a look at, um, you know, the transaction and batching of money. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications about new videos and interviews. And introduce yourself in the comments. Are you a buyer or a seller?